Whakalofalahiatu kia matuluosi, that's our greetings in new way. He uri au nō Salakutu Sini nō Hakupu e new e ia, he uri au nō Ronald Anderson nō Muruhuku e ia. Ko Ludo te Matamua, ko Rocco te Pōtuki, ko Maddie Anderson toko ingoa. I am a product of Pacifica diaspora. My mum came over with my grandfather. I, I didn't grow up with the culture, which was, um, there was a lot of it up, up in Auckland with all my cousins and, and uncles and aunties. It was a big family. Yeah, I was always the, I was the Palangi cousin. Yeah, brown, but still, still not brown. Many of my coping mechanisms just growing up in the 80s were drinking and fighting. I've also suffered from mental health and addiction for a very long time. Now my mahi is in uh, service and, and that's a big part of my wellness plan. I'd say for the past five years I've been feeling much better. I'm Pic Pico. Uh, my main claim to fame these days is that I'm the owner and founder of Pick's Peanut Butter here in Nelson. I was born in Wellington and grew up in Auckland and moved to Nelson 27 years ago. I'm very excited about being involved with this project. I spent a fair bit of time in the Pacific and I'm really, really looking forward to chatting to Matty. You must be Matty. Yeah, tēnā koe. Tēnā koe. Oh, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a look. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty blind, eh? I've so, met you once before. Where, where was that, Matty? Uh, at your opening and my son narked on me. <laughs> you were walking around saying hello to basically every person and he told you that my dad bought the cheap peanut butter once, but I knew the difference. <laughs> <laughs> And you spent some time in, uh, in Southland when you were young. Yeah, so I was born in Southland. My, um, my dad's in Anderson. Mm. And um, so I was born in Ashburton. He's from, he's from Southland. Yeah. Mirihaku. And um, so your, your, your mum, your mum's Nuean, is that? Yes. She's from Hakupu in Nui. Mm. So she's born in Nui and she, she uh, big family. Yeah. Um, lots of uncles and aunties and so many cousins, and um, yeah, that, that was funny. It would have been weird in the 70s, my dad bringing home this big, loud, um, beautiful brown woman yeah. and having brown kids. And yeah. it was, uh, well, the 70s, basically, everyone was racist down there, and it was mm. would have been very challenging for... Mm. for his family. And um, I don't remember the conversation, but... I was very young and I'd, because I'd noticed and I asked my dad why we were treated differently than the other grandkids and of course there was possibly a lot of raru raru around that yeah. already and yeah. and I think f from that question, of that night the trailer was packed and he never um, he never went back. Really? Yep, we, he never went Did back. Did he just get pissed off with, with the sort of reception? He picked, you guys, when I say he picked family first, he picked, and I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that he put our safety first and took us out of that environment, you know. And really, was it quite toxic? I, I guess so, I was too young, but he yeah. wasn't happy with it, and I imagine my, my oh, mother yeah. was Gosh. dealing with a lot yeah. of stresses of trying to um, approve yeah. or appease or fit yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he had to do much of her life being away from her family. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Um, what, what did it... It, was, it was weird because we, um, so I did have lots of whānau up in South Auckland. Yeah, but this is New Way and whānau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were lots of them up there. Yeah. But um, I guess it was a decision and work as well that we were, we were to be brought up the Palangi way. Right. And um, I didn't have my cultural language. Yeah. And um, so it was the water I swam in. Yeah. So I didn't know it was. Yeah. It was. It was my world. I I knew I didn't fit. Um, so you know, my mother was very strict on uh, 
the way we spoke and manners and fitting in. So making that cut with your paternal grandparents, did that, do you think that affected your attitude to your mum's whanau? Um, do you it, think you, you sort of didn't see that as a... Unfortunately, it didn't, we didn't really replace one with the other because we're stuck yeah. and mm. uh, we're geographically isolated from Auckland. Yeah. We still would go and visit, but you know, mm. I'd go up there and everyone would be speaking new way, and I wouldn't understand what was being mm. said. Mm. I, you know, and when I was out of Auckland, I was, you know, I was coconut or bunga or Maori, mm. and um, when I was up with the rallies, I was the Palangi um, mm. um, grandchild. So you went to school. When I went to boys' college, they had these accelerated classes. Right. And they needed a brown person. Yeah. So they ripped me That's away from say. all my mates. Yeah. Yeah. They ripped me away from all my mates, and I was stuck with all these rich um, Parker kids. Yeah. And, of course, you know, I'm supposed to assimilate and and um, possibly, you know, my brown side, we're actually possibly a little bit racist towards ourselves or, or yeah. Māori. Mm. And... Uh, so I, I was stuck with all these kids that I didn't know. Really connect with. Yeah. yeah, they're all rich. Yeah, I got so good at assimilating, you know, they got used to me and, you know, I had to, I learned to laugh at the racist jokes. Um, oh. I remember one, um, it was a little rhyme, they'd say, don't snigger the KKK is getting bigger. Yeah. And they were in such a safe space, even with me there, yeah. that they could say that. And how did you do academically, Matty? Did you, did, oh, you, I struggled. As soon as I hit college, I hated it. I didn't fit in. Because you didn't feel you fitted in? And, no, no. And that affected your work? Yeah, I went, kind of went downhill. I, was, I, was, I, kind, I did have aptitude and um, I just understood engineering yeah. and physics. So mm. it was aggravating for teachers, but I could just get by yeah. without turning up. And... Uh, I was introduced to rugby as well. Mm. So my kids, my parents started me out at soccer, you know, mm. trying to bring me up mm. Parker, and then I, which I wasn't very good at, and then I found rugby and I I could knock people over. And and the other good thing about rugby is, um, you know, I, was, uh, I had to keep my my cool all the time and be calm. And mm. um, In Tauranga, rugby was a little rough and, you know, I could punch someone and not get in trouble. Right. So I got okay. to... Um, express my feelings yeah. um, through violence and sport and there weren't any um, repercussions and and, the, and also rugby was where I was uh, later on in college where I was introduced to alcohol and um, you know the rugby club even under 16s yeah yeah you know, we have keg parties you get three jugs for 10 bucks yeah and I remember Gosh. the feeling yeah um yeah, I was this awkward, chubby yeah. kid. I wasn't Maori. Yeah. I wasn't Pākehā, but I, um, I could, I, I, f I felt like I fit you in drink. with violence and um, alcohol. It took, took the edge off, and I felt I fit in, and people thought I was neat. Yeah, the old man saw I wasn't doing bugger all I was building. Yeah, and chucked me in the car one day, asked where I was going, and he said, "I'm taking you to the recruiting office." So then I went from. Tauranga to the Navy and it really worked out well for me because you know I was really feeding into this um this toxic masculinity with the um the violence and the drinking and so was the Navy was an extension of this was it was yeah it was, was and I was able to flourish there yeah um but to be fair I those aren't really the values but I was able to um behave initially yeah, yeah. behave in one those ways and it was almost rewarded or just you are one of the guys all looked up to. Yeah. Yeah, and also it was um, a great place not to express your feelings and bottle right. stuff up. Yeah. Mm. And um, I fit, but I didn't really fit. Yeah. You know, it just the, the, and um, yeah, my drinking got worse, so yeah. it was fun. Mm. And um, initially, you know, it was neat and you always had a story, but even in before the Navy, you know, I always drank more. 
um, people would say, you know, I could handle, I couldn't handle my booze. I just, I couldn't stop drinking yeah. until I was gone or it was all gone. So you were coming towards 20 years in the Navy. What was happening for you? So um, right at the end, my drinking was getting pretty bad it was um it wasn't it got worse actually mm. but um <laughs> yeah. my binge drinking was out of control and um I, I did have some fairly decent um disciplinary events yeah around that time I was having um a suicidal ideation I, I kept thinking I had a plan I couldn't sleep yeah I I was imagining my plan was um, going for a long swim. Right. And um, th- th- that was my dream. I'd go for a long yeah. swim. I'd go yeah. for a swim. and yeah. But I knew why I was doing it. I was going for a swim and I wasn't coming back. Yeah. I wasn't trying to kill myself. No. I was going for a long swim. You know, I couldn't. Yeah. Crazy people do that. Yeah. So I was thinking about that a great deal. Um, and it was... Um, and I had this unfocused anxiety and I was constantly wearing a mask at work. And so, you know, these thoughts of going for a big long swim, I mean, I could imagine if you start thinking that and thinking it more and more, the only way to get get it out of your head would be to do it. Is yeah, that, yeah. Is that sort of... That's, that's where I got to in the end. So sure. I would go for swims. Yeah. Long ones yeah. when I was drunk. But the problem was I was... Um, I'm a really good swimmer and I float. <laughs> it's funny and right. it's not funny, but yeah, yeah. so many times, there have been a few times I'd be floating out there for a couple of hours Hell. and then I'd swim back and I yeah. wouldn't know where my clothes were because I'd been floating yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Just feeling ridiculous. And the next morning I'd wake up feeling like shit. You're like, you, yeah. you, I was thinking, what a pussy, you know, yeah. you can't do you can't anything right. Yeah. And um, so I was thinking about killing myself. A lot more. So the whole time from... Was it still the sort of swimming thing? It was the same thing. All yeah. it did it was get worse and worse. Mm. And um, the self-loathing mm. was increasing. I was just mm. absolutely worthless. And mm. um, and I was always had a mask of calmness. Everyone thought I was calm and yeah. nice. Yeah. But inside, um, just the so, intense loathing for myself was yeah. quite yeah. horrific. And so what? What moved, turned that around? What, 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 how did you? For me, the AA helped a lot yep. because I um, found out I wasn't, uh, I was in a room of people that as mental as me. Yep, yep. Shouldn't yep. say that. Yeah. But, uh, oh. and, yeah, that was, they, they were my people. And, and I that thought, was your first session, first, first rehab session, wasn't it? Is yeah, I like tried that? AA in the past. I got told to go and I yep. didn't really follow. How, how was that for you? So, um, just being sorry the whole time and apologising constantly, mm. saying mm. sorry was pretty much pointless after my history of yeah, yeah. of my addiction. Sure. Yeah. And I um, I think coming to the conclusion that I I wasn't God, right. that you know I I couldn't control and I didn't have to understand, yeah. mm. and I had to let it go. So at the moment so did, that works for me. So have you found a God outside yourself? Not a, a higher power. Yeah, no, okay. I don't. Yeah. I, I haven't signed up for anyone. No. But yeah. I, I know, I, I believe that it's, yeah. for me, it was a spiritual transformation. Yeah. And, you know, and I did use AA. Yeah. And people can say yeah. you can pick anything as, yeah. as your higher power as long yeah. as you know that it's something outside yourself you right. can't control. And and I, that's what I have to do. I use some of those tools nowadays because I've mm. been been sober over a thousand days it, it come up and hit me um, yeah. a month ago yeah yeah and it was really nice for me yeah to um to a feel real, that sounds like a real achievement yeah a and a thing yeah and it's 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 not funny it's just it's, it's basic common sense but yeah. uh, initially and when i was drinking i and i wanted to kill myself so mm. I, I couldn't i needed peace all i wanted was peace yeah I want a piece, and mm. I couldn't stop drinking. And the mm. only way to achieve that was um, doing myself in, because mm. I was hurting everyone I loved around yep. me. Yeah, it's emotional wrecking ball, mm. and it was hard on everyone. Yeah. 
and um, so I just wanted to be able to sleep, and I wanted the noise to stop. And you sleep now? I do, like a baby. Yeah. And and how's your relationship with your with your boys? It's. I think I'm a good man now. Yeah. And I find that I'm happy. Yeah. Um. I saw a um. So I do. I do. My service work gets a little bit out of control nowadays, but it's part of my wellness plan. Right. And I remember they had these photographers for Pink Ribbon coming around taking photos of the coordinators and yeah. the um volunteers. And mm. I saw one a couple of years ago, mm. and I was smiling. Yeah. And um, it really hit me because I. Because normally, because I can smile, I could yeah. always smile. You know, put yeah. the camera in front and I'll smile, or yeah. talking to someone and yeah. I'll smile. But, but though I didn't know the camera was being pointed at me, and I looked at that photo, I was going, "Holy shit, I'm actually happy!" And that was never, <laughs> that was never a possibility. All I wanted was peace. Yeah, yeah. And um, just through, um, uh, just new tools, <laughs> not drinking, mm. uh, and my service, I. I'm happy now and I laugh and I smile, mm. but I don't forget because I, um, I know what it's like and I know it can happen again. And so your work, which involves working with iwi? Yeah, so I'm working with Tawakaho Order at the moment mm. yeah. where I have brown bosses yep. who have expectations around me, yeah. things like, uh, you know, you're expected to learn a new way in song and teach it to us. Right. And who would have thought, you know, 10, 20 years ago yeah. you get a job that yeah. your culture is yeah. an asset and an expectation to mm-hmm. connect with your um, who you are and where you come from. Yeah. And I also, um, and recently, uh, connecting with the Pacifica Trust, so... I'm yeah. I'm very grateful for my work now. It's, so it's what taking I do, you right back to your beginnings, really. Yeah. So what I do and who I am is an, is kind of lining up better than yep. than the military and the mm. violence. Yeah. Because I do believe I got some. My my mother and my dad, you know, gave me some values, yeah. and and I'd never been true to them. Yes. Yes. Get that. So I'm I'm happy now and um and grateful and I feel good about myself and all those things are coming together. Yeah, for and, you. and I remember all I wanted to be able to do. I wanted peace. I wanted to hate myself a little less. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't mind. Like now I wake up going, you know, you're okay, which yeah. is pretty good for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's damn. Yeah, and actually, I, you're amazing. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like I can. Um, I do feel I'm very rich though. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. I, I've got my children, yeah. I've got people around me that care, mm. and I can, you know, I can sit down and just stare at the holes and see the different greens. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Or you hear the big fat kiddo going <laughs> <laughs> above you. <laughs> or you hear the birds singing. Yeah. Oh, no, and I can think, amazing, man, man, I'm lucky because I yeah. never used to hear that. All yeah. I used to hear was yeah. how horrible I was. And Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Hey, well... Um, Thank you very much for, for sharing that. It's been a real privilege for me. And uh, and good luck. I think you're wonderful. So Yeah, thank you. And I'm so glad you're in Nelson. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> like Nelson. Nelson's full yeah. of wonderful people. Yeah. But I think, you know, one of the takeaways is, you know, I tell people, you know, you got to talk about these things. Mm. And sometimes, you know, when you when I'm, I'm working with someone or a friend yep. and you actually ask them, mm. Have you thought of? Um, are you thinking of killing yourself? Have yeah. you thought about it? Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people say yes. Yeah. And asking that question is never. Uh, it's not a trigger. I've done a little bit of training. Mm. It's the not talking. Yeah. And uh, as soon as you start opening up, you find um, there's so many people out there struggling. You're not alone. Yeah. That's the problem. Is we all think we're alone yeah. and weird. Yeah. We, you know, there's a lot of people out there needing a little bit of help and yeah. just talking about it and maybe losing some of that that pride yeah. and leaving yourself open mm. is, is such a valuable tool and gift yeah. and the grace to accept a little bit of help. Mm. But thank you for listening, Pink. <laughs>
Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.